Welcome to Your Cyber Path, the podcast that helps you get your dream cybersecurity job by sharing the secrets of experienced hiring managers and top cybersecurity professionals with you. Now, on to the show. Another question you might expect uh, to get, which is going to be a little bit more advanced and may or may not show up depending on the job that you're applying for, right? So, but it could be something like, how can a software company provide non-repudiation for their code when they're distributing it? Now, we've already talked about this, you know, that they're, that they're using uh, digital uh, encryption in order to uh, sign the code. But Jason, you're all over this. So tell us again how you would answer this question. Okay, so if I'm putting on my Jason, the interviewee hat, uh, I would say, well, a lot of software companies use code signing as a way to provide non-repudiation for their code. When they're done creating their code and it's gone through the software uh, validation process and software testing process in the software development lifecycle, we get to the point where we're ready to distribute it. And as we get ready to distribute it, we're going to create a hash value of that code as it currently exists. We'll compile the software, create the hash value of that, and then we will digitally take that uh, hash value and encrypt it using the company's private key that is the known good private key for this corporation. And because only our corporation has that private key, only we can sign that code. And that means the code is the same way it was when we distributed it as the time it is received by the end user. And that's how we end up using code signing as a method of doing digital signatures with thumb repudiation to, to achieve that goal. That's great, Jason. Thank you. Now I have a follow-up question. So Hello. if I receive, if I receive this signed code, well, I don't have the private key of the organization that distributed it. So how do I know that it's, what do I do? What do I need? in order to be able to test this code to find out if the signature is valid. Yeah, so to be able to test the code and verify that it's valid, you're gonna use the public key for that organization. Or because it's public, it exists out on the internet. So whichever organization created that public private key pair, for example, VeriSign is one of the most common ones. Uh, I would go into VeriSign's server and say, hey, I need the public key for kipsoftwarecompany.com and they'll give that to me. Once I have that, I can then do a hash value of the binary that I downloaded, and I will then unencrypt the digital signature, which I have from the code signing, and I'll compare those two. If the two values match, that means nothing's changed in the code, and that this code it has good integrity, and we know that it came from kipsoftwarecompany.com, and therefore it's valid. Perfect, right. And, and, uh, and scene, what I was trying to do there, right, is kind of get to the idea that in order for this to work, you have a private key that nobody except the author of the software has access to, but then you have a public key that everybody in the world needs to have access to in order for them to actually check that the dig digital signature is, is valid, okay? So that's, that's a little like practical application of public-private key encryption. So uh, this stuff really does happen in the real world. And oftentimes these code signing public keys are actually going to be pre-distributed to you in the operating system that you install. So like Windows, for example, already has the public keys for Microsoft software embedded inside of it so that you don't actually have to physically go out and, and retrieve it. But if you did buy KIPP software, I probably don't have the, uh, you know, the clout to get Microsoft to put my public key in as a, uh, a pre-installed uh, certificate. So yeah, so in that case, you might have to go and, and fetch my public key. But, but the nice thing is most of the operating systems and the app stores already have that happening in the background. So you wouldn't necessarily have to go to Kip's website to download his public key because it's already in, if I got your software through Google Play, right. Apple App Store, uh, the iTunes App Store, or Microsoft Store, all of those already use digital signatures. And we call those our developer keys. Once you create a developer account, you get a key and you can then use that to do all your digital signature. Right. Uh, if you're going to use something like, um, you know, pretty good privacy or GPG instead, then you're going to have to actually physically download my public key because there's no centralized server. That's a right. decentralized method of public key. Yeah, that. and you might run into that if you're going to download a piece of code off of like GitHub or something like that, right? Where you're going to download a pre-compiled binary, but you're going to check it to make sure that nobody has actually spiked it with a Trojan or some other piece of malicious code. And that's a very manually intensive process typically. So 